welcome back everyone in today's class we are going to discuss about behavioral modeling in verilog again i am following palinskar book so as i discussed in the previous class that you can design your uh, very uh, in your you can implement your design in verilog in different abstraction level right so it can be switching level get level data flow or behavioral level right so and we have discussed that we have synthesis tools which can convert if you uh, implement in higher level say in say data flow level and then there are synthesis tools which can give you automatically get level and then synthesis tool can give you transistor level and so on right uh, so it is uh, kind of desirable that you write uh, your uh, you implement things in in higher abstraction level so that your uh, effort is less and uh, you in in quick time you can actually complete the design synthesis process or the i uh, the ic design process right so uh, in today's class we are going to talk about this behavioral modeling so uh, in the behavior modeling is kind of uh, you know what is your algorithm so it's kind of defining uh, algorithmic behavior in verilog right so here you are not sure about exactly how we are going to implement in uh, the design in the hardware but you know what to implement right say for example the multiplexers that uh, i talked about earlier uh, so you don't know whether you want to implement with a and or gate or some other way but you know that you need a kind of multiplexer whose behavior is like that uh, if the select value is 0 0 you are going to select the input 0 and so on right so in such case we can algorithmically define the multiplexers so it's more or like C, uh, it's a C behavior, right? So where we write algorithmic behavior in C, C++, so it's, uh, it's kind of you're explaining some algorithm in C, instead of C you're writing in Verilog. But since Verilog is a hardware description language and th here in hardware runs in parallel, so the behavior is not exactly the same as C, right? So just give a very classic example, suppose if you have say B equal to A, then uh, c equal to b and then d equal to c right so if you write this in in c um, in c language what will happen if your a equal to 5 uh, so first b will become 5 then uh, b will come to c so c will become 5 and then c will come to d so d will become 5 so this is basically sequential nature right so it is executed sequentially right so uh, it exactly uh, e executing sequentially, but once you have this behavior in Verilog, it, it depends on various things, right? Whether you use b equal to a or b equal to this, right? So this is also this assignment type is also matters whether you use b equal to a or this less than equal to kind of things, whether your a b c is net or reg. Right. So, it depends on that and also whether you use uh, assign or always or initial. Right. So, it all depends on whether you have written this uh, expressions whether this b equal to a, c equal to b and d equal to c within a always block or initial block or using assign statement. So, it depends on uh, this, right. So, I am going to talk about that aspect that what are the features that Verilog supports in behavioral level and how to use them. So, as I mentioned this uh, uh, this Verilog has uh, two kind of uh, procedural block which is initial and the other one is always. I uh, will talk about first initial block. So, uh, in initial block whatever the, so it starts ag exactly at the time 0. So, it is whatever you are going to write within the initial statement that is going to execute in time 0, okay. So, uh, and uh, the syntax is uh, like this. So, you have this initial and then you have begin and end and whatever the statement you want to write, you write within the initial block, right. And if you have a single statement, you do not need to specify this begin and end here. For example, in this initial block, there are uh, only one statement. So, I am not going to uh, use this begin and end there is no harm if you use right. So, now if you have multiple initial blocks, so I have in my example that I have taken here which is within as module stimulus, you can see here it is very important to note that the type of all these variables are reg. Okay. So, I have one initial block where I am updating assigning A, there is another initial block uh, here where I am updating or assigning value to A and B 
then I have another initial block third initial block inside that I am assigning x and y right and then uh, and there is another initial block where I am saying that you finish this. So, whenever there are multiple initial block they are all going to run at the time 0 in parallel okay. and this is basically the initial block is not going to is a synthesizable uh, statement. So, usually this is being used for simulation purpose. Okay. So, you just initialize some value to some registers or you control uh, the overall uh, simulation for a particular time. So, you want to uh, define the duration till what you are going to simulate your design and so on. Right. So, this is basically initialization, monitoring, waveforms and other processes that we execute only once during the entire simulation. Okay. So, this is where we are going to use initial block. So, let us try to understand if I write this uh, example and what will be the output. Okay. So, what I am saying here in this uh, initial block that this is the delay value that I have explained in the previous class. So, it says that from 0th time you uh, finish this uh, simulation after 50, 50 unit of time. Okay. So, basically the whole process will run for 50 unit of time and then this dollar finish is a support it supports in very long it will say that it will finish this execution okay. because otherwise the uh, hardware will run infinitely. Okay. So, now uh, here you say that as I mentioned all this initial block is going to run in uh, in time uh, in time 0. So, these are all parallel. So, this actually define that your simulation will run for 50 unit of time. This initial block say that in time 0 your value of m will become 0. So, in time 0 m will become 0 and this block and this initial block also running in parallel, but here you are assigning the value uh, a after 5 unit of time. So, after 5 unit of time your a will become 1 right and this b will become 0 after 25 minute unit, but this is after execution of this I will talk about this this is a blocking assignment. Okay. So, that means it will block the execution of the next operation. So, until these operations are uh, executed I am not going to execute the next one. So, it basically blocking okay. this is blocking it means that although this b will be assigned 25 minute of time, but this will start only after 5 unit of time. So, B will become 0 only after 30 unit of time. Okay. So, that is what this. So, in this initial block which is running in parallel with other uh, other initial block here you are saying that X will become 0 after 10 unit of time. So, this block does not depend on uh, wait for this because all this 4 initial block will run in parallel. right? So, all this initial block will run in parallel. Okay. So, since I am writing here 10 units, so x will become 0 after 10 unit of time. So, this is not waiting for this block, right? it, it does not wait for this, these are all running for parallel, but since x uh, there is a delay of 10, so the x will become 0 after 10 unit of time that is what is here right? and this is uh, uh, after 25, but it will start after 10 unit of time. So, it is so y will become 1 after 35 unit of time right? and in 50th uh, clock. 50th unit of time the same things will ex, uh, stop the overall execution. So, there is the other type of uh, procedural block is always in the always statement uh, again this is uh, you can have multiple always block um, and the, the all the always block start in time 0 right that is the same way like initial, but initial block execute only once and this will just repeat infinitely, in, infinitely okay, until you stop the simulation this block will continuously uh, execute it. Okay. I will talk about how to control the execution other it will be execute too fast or uh, too many times. So, we, we should have some event control that I am going to discuss uh, after some time, but uh, the difference with always with initial is that initial only execute once and always repeats. Okay. So, the syntax is similar. So, you basically just like initial you will have always and if there are single statement you do not have to give begin and end, but if there are multiple statement you will give uh, begin and end. Okay. So, here I took an example uh, to define the clock and clock is uh, kind of the most uh, common thing in any hardware. right? So, you need to define this clock when uh, when you basically simulate a design. right? So, from your test bench you need to give the value of clock and the other input and you have to see whether the implementation that I have uh, done whether that is actually executing as per your expectation. 
So, what is clock? Clock is basically uh, something like this, right? So, it is basically it is toggle between 0 and 1, right? This is the value 1, this is the value 0, and this is 1 clock, right? So, in hardware, this uh, this basically 1 unit of 1 clock, right? This is 1 clock, right? So, this is the positive edge, this is the negative edge, this is again the positive edge. So, this is pos edge, this is neg edge, this one because it is coming from 1 to 0 and pos edge means 0, this is the value 0, so it moves to 0 to 1, right. So, in 1 unit, 1 clock means there will be half, this is kind of, it is a half will be 1 and half will be 0, right. And it is basically uh, moves from uh, and again and it is equal value, right. So, this is basically this is equal. So, if total unit is say 20 unit of time and this is 10, this is 10 unit of time. So, half of the time it is even 1 and half of the time it will be 0 uh, and, and so on. So, suppose you want to create this value, right. Uh, suppose you want to create this clock because you in a hardware you have to create this clock, it is not automatic. So, you can use this particular sm small code that will actually implement that it will give a clock that will toggle the value 1 to 0 exactly this manner. Okay. So, how we have done it? So, initially I say the clock is 0. So, I declare a clock which is a reg okay. and then I initialize. Uh, so, there is the initial block where I say clock is initially 0. So, it is basically 0 initially. So, at time 0 it will become 0. Okay. And then what I am saying there is always block because always run in continuously what I say, uh, I say ki every 10 unit you make clock equal to not of clock. So, if it is 0, it will become 1, if it is 1, this will become 0, right. So, that means what I am saying here uh, that every 10 unit you wait for 10 unit and then you complement the value of clock. So, exactly this is going to happen, right. So, initially it was 0. So, uh, uh, so this will be 10 unit, after 10 unit uh, this will become 1 and this will remain for 1 for 10 unit of time. And then uh, again after 10 unit this because always execute all the time. So, after 10 unit of time again this uh, clock equal to not clock uh, will be executed. So, but now clock is 1. So, this will become 0. right? So, this way it will continue how much time? 1000 unit of time and 1 clock is 20 unit. So, 1000 by 20 is basically 50 clock. So, there will be such 50 such clock unit. right? So, this is how I can utilize the initial and always block to create a clock that will be utilized in my, in my design. Okay. Here are a summary that this is basically both initial and always block uh, are like concurrent process. So, all the blocks running in concurrently statements uh, in a block are executed sequentially, but within one unit of time. Okay. Uh, but if you specify a delay, it will be wait. Okay all blocks execute in parallel that I have already explained. So, initial block execute only once and it is not synthesizable, right. In your code that is going to hardware, you cannot have an initial block. This is used in test bench. Always block as I mentioned, it executes repeatedly. It must have some timing control uh, that I have not introduced in my previous example, otherwise it will become infinite loop. Okay? So, that is something I will explain. And remember, in, within the initial and always block, this the LHS one must be a reg. Okay, so it is basically you are assigning the value to some register. Okay, reg, and the right hand side can be wire or reg or net. Okay, so in all my example uh, here, clock is a reg. In my previous example here, ABC everything is reg. Right, so you cannot have net wire here. Right this cannot happen. So, then you can then it will give you error that this is not allowed within the procedural block. So, uh, this part is clear. Uh, I will move on. Uh, so, as I mentioned the event control, this is the most important thing when you write always block uh, because uh, if you do certain uh, operations within a always block, you have to control the uh, occurrence of that particular event. Right? That is why it is called event control. There are two way we can do it one is called age triggered event control and one is level triggered event control. Okay. So, in age trigger usually we will write uh, at the rest pos edge clock. Okay. It is like always at the rate pos edge of clock and then whatever you write here begin 
and end. Within that whatever statement you are going to write here that will be executed only when the positive edge of the clock comes, right. So, if you think about this clock, so this is going to happen here, this is the positive edge, this is the positive edge, this is the positive edge, this is the positive and so on because 0 to 1, right. So, whatever the operations you are going to write here that will be executed only at that time. So, all the passage also defines 0 to x, 0 to z, uh, x to 1 and z to 1, but usually we consider in a valid behavior 0 to 1 is the positive edge. Similarly, you can also write uh, always at the right neg edge that means that the event will happen in the negative edges, okay, only in the negative edges and so on. But uh, it depends on your design, uh, you uh, use positive edge or the negative edge, but most of the time uh, people prefer to use pos passage of clock to have the event. Okay. On the level triggered, it is not on the on the edge of the edge uh, in the positive edge or the negative edge. What you do? If you write here say always then at the rate A or B, it means whatever you are going to write here that means begin and end, whatever the uh, op operation you are going to write here, whatever the statement are there they will be executed whenever the value is modified, right. So, any time when the value of A or B changes, uh, this operation will be executed. So, it is kind of level triggered, right. So, think about this A is your clock, right. So, whenever uh, this become 1, things will execute, whenever it from it, uh, so this is the level, right. So, it, it, it whenever it go from 0 level to 1 level and then here in entire duration time, this operation will be executed and similarly, whenever it become 1 to 0, Big, if you write here clock, right. So, that means, uh, whenever it becomes 0, again there is a change of value, right. Then again this will be executed. So, that means, this operation will be executed kind of 2 times within the same clock if you write here only clock. But usually, we do not uh, write uh, at the rate process clock. Usually, we do this event control the level trigger on some specific value of the design, okay. So, both way uh, both are used uh, depends on your circuit implementation. So, now I will take this example of the multiplexer that I have uh, taken in last classes as well and there I initially talk about the gate level implementation, right. So, in the multiplexers what are the, uh, just to recap, so there are I0, I1, I2 and I3 are the inputs and there are two select line S1 and S0 and your output will become either it will take the value of I0, I1, I2 or I3 based on the select value, right. If it is 0, 0, as, uh, if it is 0, 0 then I0 will be output. If it is 0, 1, then I 1 will be your output. If it is 1, 0, I 2 will be your output and 1, 1, then I 3 will be your output. And this is the gate level implementation that I have uh, explained in the previous class. So, I will just try to show you how it is different, right. So, if you write the gate level implementation of the marks, this will be your code, right, where you declare all these wires, the, you define this NOT gate here, then you define this AND gates, 4 AND gates here, and then this OR gate is defined in this line and this the argument uh, actually make the interconnections. You have to make this, you have to be give the very precise uh, name here, so that this this make this interconnections. If you make a mistake here, the connection will be different. So, it is very difficult, I mean you have to be very careful about the interconnections, you are making the interconnections, right. This is the gate level. Then in the data flow level, so I am not going to bother about the, how many AND gates, how the interconnections, I will write them in terms of expressions. So, I am just writing this truth table as a assign. So, here uh, you can see this y is assign getting the assign value right and this is you see here this is equal it is a blocking one I will talk about that later. So, but here exactly you define that whenever it is 0 0 then i 0 will be output when it is 0 1 then i 1 will be output if it is 1 0 then i 2 will be the output then 1 1 1 then i 3 will be output. So, you are defining this, but you are not making any interconnections or anything you are writing directly ok. This is the data flow level which is uh, uh, defining how the data flow from the input to the output y, ok. Now, in the behavioral level, here you see here I uh, instead of defining your y, so, so far this y was output, you, if you do not uh, specify anything it is by default it is wire. So, this is wire here that is why I am using the assign statement. Then here also I have not defined its reg, so it is wire and that is why I am making the connections using get level, ok. Now, here this y is reg. So, this is reg because if you have to define something behavioral level, 
within always or initial block this uh, the left hand side must be reg. So, I define uh, y as reg. Okay. So, now what is uh, happening here? So, what I am saying here? So, your select is basically you can write here select is S0 and S1. right? So, you are saying that if it is 0, 0 then output will be uh, I0. If it is 0, 1 then you are saying y will be I1. If it is 1, 0 then I2 and 1, 1 then y will be I3. Okay. So, important thing here that so exactly you are writing in behavior level. Okay. And most importantly, this uh, always block is controlled by this events. This is level triggered. Right. So, what I am saying here, if any of this value changes, then only execute this. Right. So, if the value of I0, I1, or I2, or I3, or select line value changes, then only you execute this. Right. Otherwise, you do not uh, execute it because it will not change the value. So, in, if you initially say, suppose your output is uh, your select line is 0, 0, your I0 is going to output and nothing is getting changed. So, that means, uh, that I 0 will remain in the output. Now, say value of I 0 changes and your select line still 0 0. So, now the new value should go to the output. right? So, that is why whenever the value of I 0 changes, then I am going to redo the same operation. Again, this I 0 will go, but the new value of I 0 will pass to the output. Okay? So, this is the behavior level modeling. So, I, I hope you understand the difference between uh, get level, data flow level and behavior level modeling. Uh, of the same multiplexers. Okay. Now, so far I was using only the blocking assignment. So, the assignment operation within the always block. So, this is the assignment operation, this is blocking one. So, I am using mostly this blocking one so far, everywhere I have used so far blocking one. So, there are two ways you can assign the value with uh, within the uh, procedure block always an uh, initial one is blocking and one is non blocking. So, you are aware of blocking one so far. So, in the blocking as the name suggests if you have multiple uh, assignment operation within the uh, within the always block and if you use the blocking one. So, that will block the execution of the next one. Okay. So, it is basically make the process sequential just like your C code. So, if you write B equal to A, A then uh, C equal to B then d equal to c within always block and using this blocking assignment. So, then this will be executed only when this is done. right? So, the value of a will pass to b that value will come here. So, we will get the new value. right? Uh, so, suppose a, a equal to 5. So, b will become 5 then uh, after that this will be executed. So, c will also get 5 and then after that this will be executed. So, d will also get 5. Okay? and a, b, c are all reg. Okay. Now, there is one different type of assignment which is called non-blocking which is given by this symbol which is kind of le less than equal to, but this is uh, used together okay, is non-blocking. So, in the case of non-blocking this particular assignment does not stop the next one. right? So, that means, what is going to happen if you write the same ex expression here a equal to b and c and here instead of this, so suppose you are now writing this a equal to a, then c equal to b and then d equal to c and you have all reg, right? this is all, all reg, this b, c, d and a. So, what is happening here? So, suppose your a equal to initially your a equal to 5 initially right? and then b equal to say 10, c equal to 20 and d equal to 30 say the initial value, right? you have initialized those register with uh, those values. Now, because these are non-blocking assignment now, these are all going to run in parallel and you have put this into within the always block. right? This, these statements are within a always block. Okay? So, what is going to happen? So, now this all will take the old value of a. right? So, what is going to happen? Your a is 5. So, b will become 5, b was 10 it is not the 5 because it is running in parallel it is not waiting for the updated value of b right so this of these three operations are running in parallel so what is going to happen so this b is not the new value of b it is the old value of b so which was 10 so c will become 10 and d equal to c and c is although become 10 here but it is uh, the it will uh, still use the old value of c because these are running in parallel it's not waiting uh, the new assignment of c so, d will become 20. 
right. So, after this execution what will happen your A remain 5, B become 5, C become 10, D become 20 right this is going to happen from this to this. So, this is the difference between blocking assignment and non blocking assignment ok. So, based on our requirement uh, most of the time we use this blocking assignment for simulation purposes, but in real hardware we usually when we update the register we uh, update them in parallel because they are event controlled by the passage or negage of the clock right. So, I will just uh, the similar example that I have uh, explained this is the same example. So, effectively when you uh, use this non blocking one uh, these are reg right these are all reg and this is the same example I explained. So, they are basically reg here and it will take the old value of this uh, a it is not the new value what is getting right. Whereas, when you use the blocking assignment this to have this correct we were usually we use assign here ok. So, this is uh, I am going to declare them as net and otherwise it will create a problem and take an example next to it right. So, usually we do not use in your actual implementation uh, within for a reg we always use this uh, less than equal to as the assignment non blocking one and for wire we use the blocking one with the assign operation right. So, uh, where I will declare this abc as net wire and they are not inside the always block right and they are will be all they are actually uh, be defined by assign statement right. So, you will write assign a equal to 1 then assign b equal to a then assign c equal to b ok. So, if you declare them as uh, and where you have or a b and c right. So, I have already explained here if you declare them as reg and if you use this oh, this will be the modification they will take the old value right. But if they are wire ok they are wire and they are defining using the assign statement still they will take the they will become the new new value ok. So, I will explain why. So, what is happening here? So, if you uh, think about this so if you do this this is the connection happening right. So, your a because these are all assigned statement what happen whenever the right hand side gets changed your value this operation going to execute ok. So, this these are all running in parallel and whenever uh, this value changes so your a will become 1 a will become 1 and initially there may be some other value was there right. So, now a is getting updated so this assignment is going to execute right. So, now b will also become 1 and now, uh, because B changes this assignment operation is going to execute. So, now C will become 1 ok. So, you just notice very very carefully. So, what I am doing here, here I wrote this statement within always block right this is within always block, always block I am writing wrote these things. Then they are taking the old value because they are all reg right and they are non blocking. So, they are running in parallel. So, they do not have time to take the new value right. So, this is exactly this this was the case right. So, I am writing within the always block these are all reg then they are going to take the old value ok. So, I can explain here, but whenever you are uh, using wire this abcr wire and you are not writing this three statement you are not writing this three statement within always block you are writing using assignment statement and they are wire although they are blocking right they are still blocking, but because of the uh, convention of assign this will effectively take the the value of 1 will propagate it to all all of the variables ok. But now if you see here initially let us say uh, if you run uh, write them within the always block. So, I am writing now always uh, then begin in. So, you are writing say suppose that there is passage clock a equal to 1 non blocking b equal to a and c equal to b right. So, what is going to happen? So, whenever the positive edge come so this is the positive edge. So, initially let us say this this value of 0 1 0 ok. So, now uh, your uh, value of a is effectively 0 right. So, you have 0 here b equal to 1 here right this is b 1. So, whenever this passage come 
this value will update this right so one will update this and since whatever the value was at the input that will update this right so zero will update this and whatever the value at the input this will be updated by one right so at this point the value will become one zero one zero one right you can see you are giving one so now again it will update but it was one it will update it by one so now it was one here instead of zero i have one here so this one will update this and here it was instead of one that this zero was there so this zero will update this so now i'll have the value so initially it was zero uh, one zero so this is a b c then it will become one zero one and then it is become one one zero right this is clock one this is clock two this is clock three right so this is how this will going to execute right so this is how because these are all running in parallel it is always take the old value uh, and this is non blocking they will run run execute in parallel this is going to happen okay so what is the takeaway here so we usually use this non blocking for the reg assignment within always block and we use this blocking assignment within the assignment operation so that the behavior remains same right so it does not uh, in hardware i want to run everything in parallel so i'm going to use uh, this particular uh, blocking statement for the wires in assign statement and this non blocking assignment for the registers within the always block and for initial block we usually use both because that is control the simulation i have to sometime wait uh, to something happen then i'll do, do the something else so i can use this blocking one for the initial block also so i just uh, conclude with uh, one example where this uh, how this if you use this blocking one f within always block how it might get problem okay so this is a rest rest condition may create because of this okay so let's take this example suppose your a and b is reg right a and b is reg and you have two always block in one block you are writing in the passage of clock so whenever the positive edge of clock comes so in the positive of clock uh, comes you make a equal to b and here you want to write b equal to a so now suppose your a is initially 5 b equal to 10 so you want to do both because they are parallel they want to uh, going to execute in the same time so now uh, whether b value will update in a or a value will update in b so that not known right it depends on the how you implement your simulator so that is what is called rest condition so you want to update b into a a into b that is creating problem right so you don't know what will be the updated value of a and b so this is what is called rest condition but instead of this blocking statement if you write no, using the non blocking statement so what is going to happen your a is 5 and b is 10 and these are running in parallel so they are not blocking each other so what is going to happen so this b value will update here so a or a will become 10 and this is the old value of a it's not blocking by this operation right so what is going to happen this is the old value of a which is 5 so b will become 5 so now after initially so in initially your a and b was 5 and 10 and after clock 1 this will become 10 and 5 so it is basically swap the value so this is what your probably expectation right so uh, and uh, with this non blocking operation you are going to uh, get that particular thing okay so this is just just to identify uh, summarize or highlight that we should use this non blocking thing for reg assign within always and uh, for this wire uh, in the assignment statement we should use this blocking statement okay and there it doesn't matter because it's event driven uh, finally the value will be updated okay uh, and one more important thing here is that if you in this example uh, which i was talking about here so it the order doesn't matter okay so order does not matter because uh, it's event control so even if you update uh, a equal to 1 at the last but whenever this get updated this will be again trigger right so this will again trigger and this will again trigger so again this order does not matter for wire also and similarly here in this case this order does not matter because these are running in parallel it doesn't matter whether you do b equal to a first or a equal to b first and because it's going to this right hand side is always going to take the old value of this and this will be updated right so it doesn't matter which order you do so that way you don't need to bother about the way you when you write your c code how which order the statement will be there 
uh, usually within always block or multiple always block it does not matter which order you write because finally these are all going to run running in parallel and because of the convention it will take the old value it is the same thing. Similarly also for this uh, assignment statement for wires the order does not matter because it is event control thing whenever the right hand side changes the left hand side will update. So, even if you make a different order after some time uh, there may be some some glitch in the initially but after some time the data will be stabilized okay, and you will get the expected value. Okay. So, uh, there are few more example before conclusion. So, here I just uh, give you one more example that you have A, B, C all reg and this is the blocking assignment. So, here this will happen after 10 second right. So, 10 unit of time this will happen after 30 unit of time because 10 unit occupied here because this is a blocking operation. So, this will only execute after 10 unit of time and this will be assigned will happen after 20 unit of time. So, 10 plus 20 30 and this will happen 10 plus 20 plus 40 70 unit of time. And if you write the same thing with non blocking one these are all running in parallel. So, this will happen after 10, 10 unit of time this will happen after 20 unit of time and this will happen after 40 unit of time because these are all running parallel, but because of your this delay they, they are just wait from 0 to that unit of time and then going to execute. Okay. I hope uh, this uh, the concept of initial block and always block and use of this blocking and non blocking uh, assignments are clear with this. Thank you. Mm -hmm.